Greetings everyone. Welcome to another lesson in mathematics and art connections. Today we're going to be exploring uh, what is known as the Astrid design that you see on the screen right now. It looks pretty complex, but as you will see, uh, it is created by repetition of a certain pattern. Uh, and there's a lot of deceptive features here. Things look very curvy, but as you will notice, everything is going to be actually uh, going to be created by uh, straight segments. So, uh, again, for this uh, design, you're going to need Geometry Sketchpad uh, 5.0, version 5.0 or higher. Uh, and when you have Geometry Sketchpad ready, uh, please all go to New Sketch. I already have a page, so I'm going to go to Document Options and add a blank page. And the idea is basically uh, quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the Segment tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this segment and we're going to partition it into 10 evenly spaced uh, parts. And the way we do that is we use a tool called, a transformation called dilation. It's not active yet because I haven't told it how to do it. Uh, the way dilation works is you declare a point, in this case the left end point, as the center of uh, rot uh, the dilation. You double click on it. You might remember we did this for earlier uh, uh, designs. You could also call it mark center. It'll do this point thing. And what you do is you select the other end point and you ask it to dilate. Uh, dilation basically means shrinking or enlarging. And here it gives you a scale factor. The first thing I want to do is I want to do a one tenth dilation. The scale factor is one over 10. And when I okay that, you see there's a preview already. I like it. So this is now uh, is split into a tenth of the original segment. I click on a white space because this, this is not the point that I want to dilate. I always want to dilate the right end point. So I go back to the original right end point. Uh, again, the only thing you needed to double click is the left end point. We did that already. This is the right end point. You don't need to double click on that. Uh, and I do a dilation again. This time it is 2 over 10. And I keep doing this again and again. It's kind of repetitive uh, all the way until 9 tenths. When you're done, you're going to notice that you have uh, partitioned your segment into 10 equal parts, and you'll see how that's going to be useful. The number you see in the scale factor is actually a fraction. If you pay attention to it, it says 5 over 10. Now I'm going to make it into 6 over 10. And this is, trust me, the hardest part of this. The fun begins in just a minute when we are done with that. And uh, this is now 8 tenths and then lastly 9 tenths. 10 tenths you don't need because we already have the end point. Uh, it's always a good idea to check that this segment you have created is dynamic. And I'm wondering initially if I should make this segment uh, a little bit thicker for you to see it better. So here is my segment. Uh, it is dynamic. And what I'm going to do is I can do a replicate of that same procedure. But I'm going to do something smart. I'm going to actually take this segment and rotate it by 90 degree. Double click on the endpoint. Select everything. Transform. Rotate. Uh, by default, it is 90 degrees, so I just OK it. And the reason we do this is we're going to now weave that pattern that you noticed. So we're going to go from the top last one to the bottom first one. Come down, come right. Come one more down, come one more right, etc. So as you see with our segment tool, we are weaving this pattern. Uh, even though every component of what you're seeing here is created by segments, uh, when you are done, you're going to notice there's a shape that looks amazingly like a curve. This is sometimes called the falling ladder construction, as you might uh, guess why it's called. It's like a ladder that is falling down. And observe this curve here is uh, it looks like a curve. It's actually not a curve. It's created by those segments. 
for that curve, by the way, you could ask all kinds of questions uh, and conjecture, have conjectures. It looks like a circle, but you could test to see if it is a circle. Alrighty, now we have this uh, quarter of the asteroid. Remind, let me show you what we're trying to do. We're trying to do this shape. Um, so here is uh, the first part. Uh, at that point, you could do one of two things. You could say, I'm going to take this whole shape and I'm going to do a rotation as we have done before. So that's one possibility. And keep rotating until this shape is completed. Or let me undo that so I can show you an alternative. Uh, you could select this whole object you created and you could uh, create a tool. Uh, let's call this quarter asterisk because that's what it is. It's quarter of an asterisk. Uh, and now that I have my tool here, the quarter asterisk, uh, I'm going to now, let's see, I think it's going to work this way. Oops, it didn't work. I opened it wrong. It's actually good to see what not to do. I'm going to go from this side and lock at that side. Okay. So it, the way it works, if you go from left to right, it opens sort of right upwards. So we're going to try to see if this will work this way. And if I'm not mistaken, it should work this way too. Okay. Uh, remember, you could have done this completely by a series of rotations or even a reflection. If you could figure out how to do, you could do a reflection on that. Alrighty, so what I want to do at this point is I want to take this shape. Let's actually make it a little bit more exciting than this. This is a, a cool shape you can do. Let's actually make it even more exciting than that. What we could do is we could take this shape and I'm going to double click on the very center of it. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to transform, rotate. And here you could decide what rotation you want. If you want a 45 degree rotation, let me move this so you can see the preview. You're going to get a shape like this. If we do a 30 degree rotation, you would get that, but then it will give you a chance to do one more 30 degree rotation and get this really cool shape. So here is uh, our really cool looking asterisk. So this is uh, one thing you could definitely do as a design. Uh, when you're done with your designs, uh, in general, it's a good idea to uh, hide the points. So what I'm going to do, I go to the points tool, I go to edit, select all points. Uh, it looks much, much better when the points are hidden. And uh, I don't know about you, but I kind of like my line style to be thinner when I'm done. So here it is. You could decide on a very nice color. Let's choose some kind of a, something we haven't used before. How about like this one? And then if you go to edit, uh, preferences, you could make the background uh, different colors. Uh, I'm going to go with black. Okay. So here is uh, a possibility. A design that you could create using the Astrid idea. Uh, I'm gonna let you think how you could do this original design or uh, a version of that that contains even more spikes. Alrighty, so I hope you had fun. Uh, if you make any cool discoveries, again, please let me know. Send me either a video of that or you could even send me the original uh, Sketchpad document. I would love to take a peek. Uh, possibilities are infinite. Uh, just have fun. Take care. Bye-bye.